The prehistoric ocean was thalsophobia with steroids. For many good reasons, you're probably more willing to let yourself fall into it in the middle of nowhere, or rather, on solid ground instead of the ocean or sea. After all, once you venture into the depths, that's when life begins to become more uncertain and unsettling, only to later reveal certain findings from the seabed that tell us about what marine life was like in prehistoric times. But before we start, I want to invite you to stay until the end as you will be surprised. And if you want me to greet you in the next video, stay until the end to unlock the keyword to put in comments. The trend throughout history, like every point in time, is that animals are often found lurking in deep waters, being able to terrify more than anything found on land. Today we will present a documentary that summarizes this very well. In moments you will know the sea monsters that transform the seas or oceans into the deadliest places of all time. Making making it much better to face the T-Rex than these creatures from the depths of the ocean. Now, Jurassic waters harbor giant pliosaurs. These oceans were filled with giant creatures and sea scorpions. Even the Azoic Sea was home to the largest shark of all time. However, all this paled in comparison to an even larger and more fearsome predator, a body of water that existed during the Cretaceous, which harbored numerous animals that were part of the marine predators. The truth is that today, some of today's aquatic animals shame some of these beasts. However, many did not make the cut despite being definitely worth worthy of tingling your thalassophobia and adding more reasons why this body of water was absolutely the worst place to go swimming at some point. So we start by describing the depths of the dark sea. Although you may never have heard of this shallow and prehistoric ocean, or rather inland sea, there are many chances that you have walked through it, or at least what remains of it, helping in most of North America and in the process, created two continental islands, which no longer exist Lamia that was to the west, along with the Appalachians that were to the east of this state. Its existence persisted for approximately 34 million years from the beginning of the Cretaceous, the first epoch of the Paleocene 66 million years ago. Throughout all this time at sea, monsters could be found at every point, but at some periods, they were indisputably worse than others. With the Western Interior Seaway reaching its climax and its peak of need during the Campanian epoch of the late Cretaceous, the seaway was warm and tropical in nature, while spanning 600 miles or 970 kilometers at its widest point. It measures more than 2,000 miles to 3,200 kilometers long. In addition, it was remarkably shallow for its size, possibly having only 900 meters or 3,000 feet deep at its lowest point. Compared to its depth, its estimated average was around 50 miles. On the other hand, the Western Interior Seaway still managed to cram a ridiculous amount of ruthless and feared predators who were routinely larger or more terrifying than any of the dinosaurs seen on land. And here we will tell you about some of them. Them, so don't move. By far the most famous of these aquatic monsters and probably the best swimmers were the Mosasaurs. This was an extinct group of aquatic reptiles that could grow to enormous sizes. They were characterized by body shapes similar to monitor lizards, although slightly different from their modern relatives. They had four paddle shaped fins instead of limbs or extremities. Their bodies were elongated and had aerodynamics for maximum drag reduction. Depending on how advanced the established species was, it had a type of swimming like an eel in an undulating form. However, later the Mosasaurus would develop like a shark. As they had larger caudal fins, they used to propel themselves with surprising speed, proving to be powerful swimmers and masters of the sea. This species completely dominated the interior and western seaway. They used to be the largest predators, boasting specialized teeth that were usually large, sharp, and sometimes protruding. These specimens would enjoy a high level of diversification, which they did not experience anywhere else. Likewise, it is known that more than 10 times types coexisted all at once, which ranged from 2 meters or 6.5 feet to possibly 18 meters or 59 feet. But despite their diversity, you are most likely to be attacked by only three types of Tylosaurus, as together they represent the most abundant Mosasaur that existed at that time. In this environment, with most of the specimens from this time being attributed specifically to the three types of Tylosaurus, these classes could be observed who were by no means small compared to certain specimens that grow up to 6.5 2 meters or 20 feet in length, which is similar to the length of the largest recorded white sharks. Despite its size, this specimen was extremely agile. On the other hand, this master of the ocean used its soft teeth to catch a variety of fish within the less deep parts of the seaway. Although it was not designed to be a threat to animals of a size similar to that of humans, this mosasaur was still capable of giving an unpleasant bite, so it is possible that even it may have been able to travel for some time to fresh water, making it much more difficult to avoid. 
need. If you are enjoying the video, support us with your like. This helps us bring more quality content like this. Subscribe to our channel and activate the bell. Things start to speed up even more. The abundant Mosasaur was a little bigger compared to certain individuals who measure 24 feet or 7 meters from head to tail, weighing approximately 1 ton, thus being close to the weight of a giant Nile Crocs. But ironically, this probably was not a great threat to the mega aquatic space. Since studies were carried out on their teeth, it has been discovered that they were extremely fragile. So we can speculate that it mainly delighted in consuming smaller fish and soft tissue squids within deep waters. It seemed that this was the worst place for small bugs to swim. On the other hand, it is important to mention that the common mosasaur was a giant with a desire to match the Tylosaurus. This mosasaur covered a large part of the marine space in the same way as others of its kind. This was much larger compared to adults, measuring between 12 and 5.8 meters, or the equivalent of 39 to 52 feet long, being quite similar to the length of a humpback whale, making one of the largest mosasaurs on the entire planet. Unlike other specimens, the Tylosaurus had teeth that terrified anyone. Generally, mature people have up to 32 teeth. At this point, the Tylosaurus and humans were quite similar to each other. But if we talk about the size of their teeth, this specimen evidently surpasses man, its large, thick, and recurved teeth being finely toothed to be adapted to pierce large animals. Likewise, thanks to its size, the Tylosaurus could intimidate anyone in its environment, playing the role of a super predator, despite holding the title of the largest predator that have ever existed, the Mosasaur does not have the deadly jaws that are imposed in these waters, since that title was for a predator that bordered the outermost edges of the western interior seaway, the Dino Succus. Yes, that's right, this prehistoric body of water not only had a size larger than the largest Mosasaur of all time, but it was one of the largest crocodiles that have ever existed. Currently, scientists are not positive about the degree of presence of Dinosuchus in the region, but it is believed that they inhabited the estuaries of bays on the coast, while perhaps venturing into deeper waters. Also, from time to time, specimens have been found in marine deposits. In addition, it definitely lived both in the east and on the western side of the seaway, and interestingly differed in size depending on which side it lived. In the east, the Dinosuchus grew to smaller sizes, but were more abundant, while in the west they were fewer, but much larger, reaching 12 meters or 39 feet long. This obviously is not at all close to the length of the largest mosasaurs. In terms of weight, there are estimates that suggest a maximum of about 8.5 tons. Regardless of weight, the Dinosuchus had the advantage of having more impregnable defenses, as like many crocodiles, they were also covered with osteoderms. However, Dinosuchus was a bit more unique than normal, as their osteoderms were in fact larger and heavier than normal. When they were first recovered, the paleontologist confused them with the armor of an ankylosaurus. These armored plates covered the back of the specimen and were semi-spherical in shape, providing them with ample armor and, at the same time, serving as an accessory. The points for the tissue eventually played a fundamental role in their ability to walk out of the water. In general, the osteoderms made the dino sukus one of the best equipped animals in the waters, but what really made it stand out was its monstrous bite. To begin with, the dino sukus had huge skulls, which means that their jaw was very wide giving them a great biting power that was only amplified by the presence of a well-developed jaw based on muscles. All of this resulted in a bite that potentially delivered more power than even that of an adult T-Rex, with some studies estimating the force of a bite at more than 100,000 newtons, which represents five times the power needed to crush a car. An astonishing amount of energy would have been channeled with their robust teeth, which were sharper towards the front and more blunt towards the back. Now, where did all the sea monsters go? This raises the question of where they and the rest of the terrifying animals that called these waters home came from. Well, some seem to have had a slow decline, or in other cases evolved into something else. The animals also had to deal with the fact that the seaway was constantly shrinking, although what really changed their life dynamics was the asteroid that crashed into the Earth 66 million years ago, causing disturbances and extreme damage. At least the impact was especially bad here compared to other bodies of water, considering that the giant rock touched quite close, sending a giant tsunami and other unpleasant things through the waters, leaving as evidence the iridium found in the gills of the fish. The devastation ended many of the iconic sea monsters and 
finally brought the conclusion of the Aquarium of Hell. So I hope you know why it was called this way, as the waters have been home to many nightmare creatures. After the end of the Western interior marine life, including recently a species of dolphins that emerged in the north of the United States, which literally had spears for teeth. Wow, that sure sounds interesting. If you like this video, support us with your wonderful like and subscribe to our channel for more videos of the prehistoric world. Comment us, which of the aquatic monsters has impacted you the most? We will be reading you. See you soon.